I'm a software engineer, artist, coder, kind of things. Uh, you can find me online as P01. Um, I have a background in the demo scene, and I work for Microsoft, but I don't work on the web or JPI, unfortunately. Um, Uh, yeah, during the day, uh, I work on the profile card, which is used by a bajillion people on Outlook, Office, and Office 365. Uh, yeah, it's completely different from what we have been talking about today. Uh, but it's it's a great place to work nonetheless, and they fully support all my web audio shenanigans, so, so it's cool. <laughs> um, as I said, I'm, I come from a demo scene, uh, and this movement was born in Berlin, out of uh, crackers who remove protections from... Uh, games and software to redistribute them. Um, initially, the crackers would just add the name to the logo uh, of the software they just redistribute and focus on the challenge to crack uh, the software. Uh, but in 1984, they did something novel. Uh, they added this image before production uh, that might look familiar. Um, and it didn't do anything. Uh, but this image was a, a statement. and. It turned into a whole independent movement outside of the cracking scene. Uh, it turned into a movement that is now called the demo scene and just aims to push the artistic and uh, technical limits of any platforms. Um, you just saw some uh, demo scene productions on different platforms and sizes, and the demo scene also touches on the web platform and small sizes like this JavaScript demo uh, written in one kilobyte. Um, and it even goes to smaller sizes like this overproduction written also in JavaScript in 256 bytes. Um, yeah, I have to say, <laughs> I really like very, very small uh, productions. Um, so, okay, this is cool, um, but this is Web Audio Conference, so wh what about Web Audio? Um, yeah, of course, uh, for the demo scene productions on the web, uh, we do use the Web Audio API to, uh, to play and generate music. Um, and that brings me to uh, Ambient One Music for Airport. Does it play? Uh, yeah. um, music One uh, or Music for Airport by Brian Eno was released in '78, so it turned 40 this year. And um, Eno introduced uh, the concept of uh, ambient music uh, with uh, generating uh, generative music. Um, like finding about this. Uh, 40 years anniversary just led to a small demo scene project uh, that I worked on, um, which I call Ambient HTML5 Music for Tiny Airports. Uh, so the, the goal was to celebrate uh, Music for Airport, uh, 40th anniversary, uh, by recreating it using the Web Audio API in, well, as small as possible and about 250 bytes, uh, all using Web Audio APIs. Um, so, if you look at the, the original album art, uh, and in the back, uh, you can see a description of uh, the system that describes uh, the, all the system to generate the, the music. And the track 2.1 in particular, uh, the one that is but in the middle, is, uh, is particularly interesting. Uh, you see a system of seven uh, sounds that are played at uh, different intervals, different times. Uh, these gray boxes represent the duration of the sound, and then it repeats after a while. And this, uh, there are really two things that set this system apart. Uh, so for the purpose of uh, making this demo scene homage as small as possible, we will see how to recreate both aspects of uh, this system uh, in the most compact way, of course. Uh, so the first key aspect of uh, this uh, system is that it's never ending. Uh, it's a very, very simple system, yet it, uh, it produces a lot of variety. It, it, it practically never ends. Um, so we are going to recreate that using Web Audio API. But to, run, uh, to use a Web Audio API, you, we need JavaScript. Uh, so first, we need uh, a very small web page. Um, this one is it's a web page. It's, it's OK. Uh, it's 38 bytes. So there's just a little bit of text, uh, like a title, and an SVG element with an own load event which we will abuse uh, to run JavaScript inside. Uh, so, <laughs> about the, the never-ending system. Um, so each sound is played in loop uh, at different durations. And if you look at these uh, boxes that move around, 
Um, if you look at just two of them, you see that they often cross each other, and so that means that they often get in sync and play, and so the music of these two notes loops. So if you look at three, uh, you can see them crossing each other and then the music loops, but as you consider more and more of these uh, sounds, it becomes ever so unlikely uh, for the music to repeat, and it's practically uh, never ending. So we will need to set um, our system of loops in motion in uh, uh, with the web audio API. So to do that, uh, we have many options. Uh, we could create oscillators, uh, uh, audio buffers, or uh, audio worklets, which we have seen. But these are all pretty verbose. Um, so instead, I choose to use a script processor node on the audio process event. Uh, it's well, we have seen it's a bit. Uh, it's not considered very clean uh, because it works on main thread, uh, but we are trading uh, size in for performance or performance for size. Um, so here's the code for that. Uh, first line, we create an audio context. Uh, the second meaningful line, we create a script processor uh, node with about 8,000 samples, zero input channel and one output channel. Uh, then we connect it to a destination and add the audio process uh, handler. Uh, putting this together in uh, our tiny, tiny web page, uh, that gives this, and we are around 142 bytes here. Uh, yeah. And we saw that uh, the key to get this uh, never-ending system is the duration of the loops. Uh, but how, how are we going to get these uh, durations of the uh, seven sounds? Um, there are different ways. We, we could store a list of the durations, but there are seven sounds. Each sound should last hundreds or thousands of milliseconds, so this is going to quickly add up to 40, 50 bytes. Uh, that's a bit too big. Uh, we could also uh, uh, we could also say assign the duration for the first sound and make every subsequent sound last a little bit longer. Uh, that would be very compact, but that would probably sound a bit predictable and it's not so nice. Uh, what I choose to use is a very small formula. Uh, mathematical formula that gives very um, er, very high precision numbers in only a few bytes. Uh, I ended up picking a tangent of uh, the index of a sound, so i modulo 7 would be 0 to 6 uh, for the 7 sounds. And I just pick a tangent because it's, well, you see the numbers that it gives, <laughs> it's a bit crazy. And I just added uh, a value 9 here to offset all these values uh, and get longer durations in seconds. Um, if we put that into our loop system, uh, we can see something interesting. So there's, uh, there's some uh, sounds that sound more or less, or that are played more or less at the same time, and that gives something a bit harmonic, uh, which is nice. And then slowly uh, it dilutes, and then we get a more interesting structure. So I think we are on the right track. Um, so we can move on to uh, the second aspect of uh, uh, music for airport, which is the soundscape. Uh, the sound on the notes of uh, music for airports, they, they are not random. They, they sound very well together and also individually, like any two notes sound well, uh, sound good with the other. Uh, so we'll need to recreate these sounds. Um, to do that, we are going to use our uh, script processor event um, to generate our soundscape. Uh, so this is what it looks like. So we have a loop from 0 to k. Uh, k is the number of samples, 8,000 something. Um, and if you just look uh, fast forward to the last line, uh, we just populate the channel uh, 0 of the output buffer. We have a time variable, t, uh, which we increment by 2 exponents minus 5, uh, which maps to 50 kilohertz. Uh, the audio context typically plays at 44 or 48 kilohertz. Here we are also making a shortcut to save a few bytes. Normally we should increase T by the inverse of the sample rate of the audio context, but we don't have that luxury. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so putting this together uh, with our small web page that set up the audio context and so on, uh, we are just uh, under 200 bytes and we are ready to synthesize the sounds, uh, our seven sounds. Um, the seven sounds themselves, uh, they form a chord. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of how it, this special chord is called. Uh, you have the notes below, 
and uh, you can see the frequencies in Hertz. Uh, the frequencies range more or less from 350 to 850-ish. Um, so we will need these frequencies to generate the sounds for, uh, for our music. Um, so you probably see where this is going. <laughs> uh, so how do we store our frequencies? Or how do we get the frequencies? We could list them in an array, but we have seven uh, nodes. Uh, frequencies in all in the hundreds, so three bytes, a separator, that's four times seven. That quickly brings us to about 40 bytes. We, we don't have that many bytes. Uh, we could do something similar using the MIDI notes. Uh, the MIDI notes are just in the range of zero, well, zero to less than 100. Um, that would be a little bit more compact, but then we need to convert back to frequency in hertz, and then we would lose the advantage. Uh, so that would be too big again. Um, the, the frequencies of our notes, they, they are between 350 and 850-ish. If we divide that by 10, it's like 35 to 80-ish, we can represent that as, a, as an ASCII character. It's super dirty, <laughs> <laughs> but it works. <laughs> uh, so, bear with me. Um, the first line, uh, sorry, the first line of code. Uh, you see this string of seven characters, and then we get uh, car code at so the ASCII character of each note. And you can hear the different notes playing. So if you look at uh, below, you see the, the ASCII character followed by the ASCII code. Uh, and this ASCII code, if you multiply it by 10, it's not exactly the last number in Hertz that you see at the end. It's not because of the time shift. The shortcut that we took when we increased the time variable t uh, to map to 50 kilohertz, if we then take into account the the time shift, because audio context does not play at 50 kilohertz, it plays at 40 or 48. Taking that into account, our ASCII codes then maps very closely to a frequency. You see, uh, sorry, you see in the middle, uh, the frequencies that it maps to, and the frequencies that we are aiming at. It's fairly close. And that's fairly compact. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah. Having the Having the frequencies of, uh, of the sound is not enough. Um, because our sounds, they, they have no shape, they have no envelope, and they also all play at the same time. They have the same duration. So now you just hear a big mashup of all the sounds together without any shape or envelope. Um, so we need to shape our sounds. We need to create a, an envelope for each of them. Um, a simple, very simple envelope uh, and that should work pretty well for uh, Music for Airport is to have an instant attack. So the sound really starts at full volume and then slowly decays. Uh, here we just decay over one second. So the, you can hear each note playing for one second and then going quiet. Uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, the problem is that the notes, they all have the same duration. They still have the same duration. Uh, and the duration is really key to get this never-ending soundscape. Uh, so, you remember the, the formula for our durations uh, with, with this tangent thing? Okay. So, if we take uh, this basic envelope that we just created, and then we uh, divide t, the time, by uh, the duration with, with this tangent thing, then the notes will have a, a different duration. The, we just shaped each sound to its frequency, or with its frequency, uh, and its own duration. So putting it into the web, uh, into the audio processor event, uh, we get that. And that brings us to our final project, uh, which is music for report in 256 bytes. It's exactly 256 bytes. Uh, uh, let's listen a bit. Sometimes I just sorry. Sometimes I just listen to it at work. <laughs> so. Thank you. And 
Uh, I would like also to say yeah, a big thank you to, well, he's not here, obviously, uh, to Brian Eno for paving the way for uh, generative music, uh, and to uh, Tero Parvianen, uh, which you saw earlier today, for es explaining many of the concepts uh, that are uh, involved in here. And this really helped into making this. Um, my name is Mathieu Henry, and I look forward to hear more generative music from you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's no questions, just a lot of uh, admiration for that in the Slack channel, so that's, uh, that's nice. Thank you very much. Very good presentation. Thank you to all of our speakers this afternoon and to all of you for uh, being helpful with...